Live from Boston, Massachusetts, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Red Hat Summit 2015. Brought to you by Red Hat. Now your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon, here with SiliconANGLE TV's live coverage from Red Hat Summit 2015, downtown Boston at the Heinz Convention Center. Join with me for this segment is Radesh Balakrishnan, who's the general manager of OpenStack at Red Hat. Radesh, uh, it was good to catch up with you again uh, at, at the uh, Vancouver OpenStack Summit, and, and welcome, welcome back to the program. Thank you, always a pleasure. All right, so, you know, when we went to Vancouver, I mean, it was all about OpenStack, and, mm -hmm. you know, boy, there were people out there saying, you know, uh, OpenStack's dead, we moved beyond OpenStack, OpenStack's great, we're, we're moving there. Um, you know, OpenStack's part of the picture. Can you help, you know, paint for us, you know, how important is OpenStack to the overall mission of what Red Hat's doing, and, you know, how does it fit into the show here at Red Hat Summit? Right, excellent question. So. From our vision and mission perspective, the value prop that we're painting in front of our customers is open hybrid cloud, right? So if you're talking hybrid, clearly you need to get to a private cloud and being able to mix and match with public cloud. So OpenStack is integral to getting to a well-managed infrastructure as a service private cloud, so that's where the tie-in comes. The other aspect also is that uh, off late we see a lot of interest from especially in Europe where there are country specific regula regulations, if you will, for standing up public clouds based on OpenStack too. So from both the perspectives or both sides of a hybrid cloud, OpenStack is a very, very pertinent conversation. Yeah, it, it's interesting. We spent the last, you know, the first couple of years of OpenStack is, you know, what is it? Uh, you know, the, it's, it, there's a bunch of these projects. It reminds me in some ways of, if you look at Hadoop, it's, you know, there, there's there's all these sub pieces and how does it put together? How do I put together all, all the e pieces? Um, at OpenStack Summit, the foundation put forth that OpenStack is going to be the integration engine uh, for the future, which means it's going to help me bring in new, uh, new technologies. So to say like, uh, you know, containers and the like, it's, it's going to help pull those in. And it's going to work down kind of plug-in architecture uh, with lots of different devices. Uh, reminds me in some ways of what Linux has done uh, for a lot of years. So, you know, are you guys happy with that positioning? Does that fit with your vision as to where, where OpenStack fits in the ecosystem? Yeah, so I'll probably have a slightly different take to it. I view OpenStack as an ingredient to the end destination that customers want to get to. So if, you know, the two analogies that you used, you know, lead up to that, I think we are in alignment. You know, just to add a little bit more color, we're seeing a lot of interest from our customers for our storage offering, Enterprise Ceph and OpenStack together so that they can get to a storage as a service implementation, for example. We're also seeing a lot of customers interested in OpenShift on OpenStack. FICO is a customer who presented here on the solution that they have in that footprint. Again, it's music to our ears from two perspectives. One is that it helps bring the whole portfolio together. Secondly, it helps customers get to a destination that they want to get to. In other words, OpenStack is not the destination. It's an essential ingredient to the destination. A third perspective also is that many customers want to get to a, um, a footprint whereby they can manage what they have with OpenStack as well. So that's where CloudFonts, which is our cloud management platform, comes into the picture so that you can have an infrastructure which has got vSphere, Hyper-V, and hopefully our Red Hat Enterprise virtualization and OpenStack, and maybe public cloud too, all managed with a single pane of glass. So, you know, it's exciting to be being able to provide that solution or a building block for fundamentally the data center fabric of the future. Yeah, as I've been talking to people around the show uh, and, and talking to people going to the labs, I hear CloudForms is one of the top labs there. I think Docker was the other one. For some reason, Docker is pretty hot again. Yeah. Um, and uh, I talked to uh, some of your channel partners, uh, having a lot of discussion around CloudForms. Um, maybe can you explain for those that aren't familiar, you know, you know, what does that bring together, CloudForms, and why are the customers that you talk to so interested in it. Right, so before I even went to cloud phones, it's important to understand that there's a potential confusion in the eyes of, uh, or in the minds of some of the customers, whether OpenStack is that orchestration engine. Yeah. We view OpenStack as a core infrastructure block, if you will, so that's why if you look at our product, it's a rel OpenStack platform where we are co-engineering Red Hat Enterprise Linux with OpenStack so that you can stand up the core infrastructure. Now what's missing from that equation is things such as higher level functionality, such as you know, um, you know, having a self-service portal or ability to bring in business rules so that you can decide where to place the workloads, et cetera. So that's where um, CloudForms fits in squarely. 
The other dimension that CloudForms brings into the table is what I mentioned earlier, which is how do you not have to go to different schools to manage an old infrastructure, which is vSphere-based, as well as the new infrastructures, which is based on OpenStack. So CloudFonts brings that continuity across both the infrastructure, so. Yeah, and I've definitely heard that confusion. I mean, if you look at OpenStack and you say, oh wait, they've got this project called Heat. Is not is that going to be management, or is that going to plug into managers? Um, when you talk about the containers, there, there's things that are working with Kubernetes and Mesos, but it's not replacing Kubernetes and Mesos, it's allowing those to pull in, which is why, uh, you know, I, I kind of like the term, the integration engine, because it says it's not necessarily, you know, it's not doing the stack, it's working with the stack and pulling all the pieces together. Um, so did I get right the heat in, in those pieces to how Absolutely. those Absolutely, yeah. you did very well. And you can view it as a framework that brings all these yeah. elements together. Now, you mentioned, you know, Kubernetes and containers as well. One of the unique uh, advantages we have is that we are not in a camp where we believe VM is the be-all, end-all of the world as well. You know, we are fairly agnostic in terms of be it physical or virtual machines or containers that becomes the footprint in a customer environment. So our OpenStack journey is also structured in, in a way that we're not taking a camp. In other words, we're not going to say, you got to put a, con a container inside a VM and that's the only way to look at it, but rather, Regardless of you know whether you pick physical or virtual or containers, OpenStack becomes a you know a, a, a way to manage that infrastructure, if you will. Okay, great. So uh, you know Red Hat Summit, obviously a lot of announcements from Red Hat and the ecosystem partner. Uh, what what's new this week uh, in OpenStack? Well, the first and foremost is. Um, if you look at enterprise customers who have deployment plans, we recently surveyed about 310 decision makers on what are their adoption plans around OpenStack. You know, the overwhelming majority, 73% of them said they have concrete plans to get to OpenStack in the next 18 months. So while that's good news, we also probed them and what are the challenges you're facing? So the number one challenge that they mentioned was deployment and management of OpenStack itself. To squarely address that, uh, we are making available a piece of technology called REL OpenStack Platform Director. Uh, you might recall that about seven, eight months ago, we acquired a company called Innovance. They were seventh largest contributor to OpenStack at that point in time. Uh, they were primarily services focused, but they had assets around deployment management as well. So we took that, as well as took Triple O, which is an upstream project, which is OpenStack on OpenStack, and some of our own technologies around install and configure, and made this cool new technology which you're going to make available in our next release, which is coming up in summer, called Dell OSP Director. The fundamental design point is that you can make the lifecycle management of OpenStack easier so that you can do in-place upgrade, mix and match components as you're living with OpenStack moving forward. Yeah, so uh, Red Hat's made a number of acquisitions in the open OpenStack space. Um, some, I, I think about the Ink Tank acquisition last year, 100% open, uh, open source company, real easy to integrate in. Uh, Jim was talking this morning about you know, how Sage and the team worked right in. Uh, Enovance, were they, I mean, 100% open source when they came in, or was there any transition? But they were 100% okay. open source, and more exciting aspect yeah. is that whatever, although they were a services organization, whatever they were doing, they were doing in an upstream aligned fashion too. So you know, perfect marriage made in heaven kind of thing. Okay, great. So uh, when you say the, the platform director, how does that fit into kind of the overall management and orchestration tools that are out there? There's so many customers use today. Uh, is it a manager of managers? Is it you know your, your single point for everything OpenStack and beyond? You know, help, help frame it for us. No, it doesn't replace any of the existing management tooling. You think of it as you know, it's a great way to get started on OpenStack, um, as well as manage the life cycle of the OpenStack layer. It plugs into satellite, it plugs into cloud forms, it, you know, for, for that matter, it is also written in a way that, or architected in a way that um, third party um, applications can plug into as well. So it, the core design point is to make sure that the life cycle management of OpenStack is made easy because complexity has been the enemy to mainstream adoption of OpenStack. So we want to knock that off. Okay, great. Uh, Let's talk about your your partners because you know Red Hat here at the show, you know keynotes on stage, you know Cisco, Dell, IBM, 
uh, you know, lots of partners here in the ecosystem. You know, OpenStack, a lot of people look at it and just see, you know, a lot of the big guys kind of, you know, trying to figure out who gets what and, you know, who's going to own what piece of it. You know, how does Red Hat look at this? Who's your partners? Who's going to market with you when it comes to OpenStack? Well, I mean, at the highest level, if you look at our strategy around OpenStack, we set ourselves a mission of saying we need to have the world's largest ecosystem around OpenStack, right? So that's what we made a statement around two years ago. So April 2013, we announced a certification program around OpenStack. Today we have over 275 partners uh, who are certified uh, with roughly nine to 10,000 solutions around OpenStack today. So we feel very good about that. To your question about who are the, you know, among the 275, who are the ones who are deeply partnered with, I will call out Intel, Dell, and Cisco as uh, uh, three important partners. Um, at uh, yesterday's keynote, Intel highlighted the fact that we have picked four key areas that we are partnering with around upstream aligned engineering efforts to make sure that enterprise ready features are available on OpenStack. And we're also turning around and partnering with Dell and Cisco to make sure that this cool technology is you know, massively consumed by the enterprises as well. So very excited about the three-way partnership that's between Intel, us, and Dell, Intel, us, and Cisco to make sure that we are accelerating the enterprise adoption of OpenStack. All right, uh, so one of the things that I guess the, those of us that track the market of OpenStack is, you know, how much of this is going to live in service providers, how much of it, you know, are going to live either on-prem in my data center or in some kind of managed hosted environment. I mean, it's early days, most OpenStack. Uh, today, last status I saw, probably three quarters at least are on some kind of on-prem mm -hmm. uh, type environment because some of those bigger services like from IBM and HP still being baked out. Rackspace, of course, you mm -hmm. know, doing what they're there. Where do you see things today and you know, wh what would you expect it to be in the next couple of years? Uh, from our vantage point, at least for the next 18 to 24 month window, 80% of the weightage will still be on on-prem, private cloud, uh, uh, footprint. Like I said earlier, we are beginning to see a lot of interest from country specific service provider to stand up the public cloud based on OpenStack 2. Um, um, but, you know, given the fact that we have a lot of assets to bring to the private cloud uh, equation, our primary focus is on the private cloud side of OpenStack. Okay. Um Walk us through, you know, the, the show here. Where else, you know, what, what have customers been doing? You know, hands-on sessions that have been popular, um, and you know, what questions are you getting asked about OpenStack that you know, you'd like to clarify for the marketplace? Right. I, you know, maybe three things I can call out. One is that uh, while we talk quite a bit about the enterprise side of OpenStack, OpenStack is also becoming very, very uh, hot and exciting subject from a telco NFE opportunity. Okay. So in our uh, booth properties, we are showcasing how um, making OpenStack carrier grade is a journey that we are on and how we are delivering on that promise. So you know, the distinction is that some of the other players in the space are taking the approach of having a carrier grade OpenStack and an enterprise grade OpenStack, but we are taking the approach that we will make OpenStack carrier grade, right? So that, so we can get to see some cool demos there. The second okay, thing and, is, and I'm sorry, is, is, can you just give a key difference or two? You know, what, what, what do the carrier folks need? Well, so it's, it has to do more with the determinism. So you want to be able to, you know, clearly um, have real-time capabilities. You need to be able to have NUMA, CPU pinning, et cetera. So, you know, the context of the telcos is, they've lived in a proprietary past with proprietary hardware and proprietary software, which is tuned for their environment. Now they want to embrace the commodity hardware, but get still the same features and functionality. So those tend to be revolving around determinism, if you will. Okay. So that's the telco space. Great. So back to your question about what else is exciting here. Um, we are also um, highlighting the fact that the integration between Cloud Forms and RHEL OpenStack platform, which is a function of the new version of Cloud Forms, so you can see, uh, take a look at the demos that are um, available there. We do have uh, uh, a lot of uh, birds of the feather sessions um, um, and sessions focused on SDN. So we. Uh, offer the broadest choice of SDN controllers that are out there that are certified around OpenStack, so be it Plum Grid, Nuage, Juniper, et cetera, so um, we have some sessions. Okay. Uh, Most uh, of those open daylight focused, or is it you know, beyond just that? 
Well, actually, our play is uh, not to be picking one side or the other. So we certify the commercially available ones today, but at the same time, we're also participating in the Open Daylight Project. Yeah, I mean, you, you guys had a, you know, have had quite an input on, on Open Daylight, so some of the major contributors and the like, and you yeah. know, help, help shape that. Yeah, it shouldn't be a surprise that anything truly open is something that we bet on, so, yeah. yeah. All right. Great. Did we get through all three of your points? I think so. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I just want, want to give you the last word is, uh, you know, people leave Red Hat Summit, uh, you know, w w what do you want them taking away uh, when, when it comes to, you know, y your, your group? Yeah, the first thing is that we are missionarily focused on making sure that all the blockers that are in the way in terms of broad-based adoption of OpenStack are systematically addressed, both from a product perspective ecosystem perspective, choice of solutions perspective, and you know we've made tremendous journey in the last two years, expect us to continue down that path. The second thing is that to uh, some of the points we discussed earlier, we are seeing OpenStack as an ingredient to the end destination of open hybrid cloud, and so bringing together the rest of the portfolio of Red Hat to make sure that that journey is smooth and dependable in a truly open way is something that we are focused on as well. And third and most importantly, we are very, very excited about you know, talling, you know, standing on tall shoulders such as Cisco and Dell and Intel to accelerate the journey that's in front of the customers. All right, Radesh, great summary. I feel like I was doing my wrap up of Vancouver. I said, friends of mine said, you know, we're kind of going down the trough of disillusionment. Um, customers that I talk to, you know, really are talking about OpenStack, looking how to implement it, uh, and it's uh, something that's really starting to permeate throughout uh, the industry. And you know, my take on it was. Was we'll look back five years from now, and just like Linux, it's in there, it's in lots of places, uh, and majorly important after we've worked through some of those bumps. So, knocking down the red flags, moving towards maturity. Thanks so much for coming back and talking to you. Welcome back anytime, and we'll be right back uh, with our final guest uh, from Red Hat Summit 2015, right after this break. Thank you very much.